Am I live? I don't know. Am I live? <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> anyway, let me see if I can set myself up here. Anyone waiting out there, let me know. Let me ask my husband if I'm live. Let's see. Am I live? Yeah, I think I am. Am I live? Now, can you check? Oh, I'm in technology, people, but I just found out I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. Yeah, you are. Okay, I think that's much better. Yeah, I see. So, good morning. Guess what, guys? Okay? I'm in technology. Okay? When I clicked on the live link, first of all, you can't find your um your calendar i mean your scheduled uh live streams you cannot just go to them and say i'm going to click on this one that's something that youtube needs to fix it's such an, a simple fix but what is worse i had to go to my facebook page then click on the link when it took me to the link i opened the app i opened the stream and it says to me waiting for mama d to join and I'm thinking, why are you waiting for me to join when you should give me a button that says go live now, right? So, but anyway, I'm so sorry. I was ready at 9 a.m., uh, which is our time here. By the way, I tried to sit here because I was trying to get some sun in my face, but it's kind of putting a yellow glow. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Guess what? Last day of 2024. Ah, uh, what are you guys planning to do? I'm planning to go to my friend's house in, in, in Winston-Salem today to welcome the new year. You know her. She's on a yellow dress. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so uncomfortable because I kind of got upset by the fact that, you know, um, I, I, I really got upset because I was like, how do I go live? You know, when I've publicized this live event for so long and now I can't go live. I mean, seriously, YouTube, please, guys, please, please. You know, in order to go live on a scheduled stream, you are supposed to click go live again and then go to calendars and then find that the stream that's there and then click on it. It's too much, too many clicks. But anyway, I'm sorry for the rent. Uh, but I was really like disappointed. I'm like, oh no, people are gonna think I, you know, like I, I don't care about their time. I respect people's time. So I try to be on time at least. That's the least I can do. I can be early, but I try to be on time. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing well. I am looking forward to 2024. I am grateful for 2023 with all its ups and downs but i'm very grateful because there's a lot of stuff out there going on people are struggling people are suffering and um and sometimes in, in the midst of all of that the the only thing you can do is just be grateful you know it's just be grateful for whatever the fact that you're still breathing and you are alive is reason enough to be grateful okay um so but yeah i hope you i haven't even had my coffee guys i had to clean up a little bit uh because i was thinking in my mind you know like uh like i'll be ready and then i'll have my coffee sit down and then start the live and it didn't work that way but that's okay that is the story of our lives. But anyway, so yeah, I wanted to talk in this uh, live event uh, about really answering some of your questions uh, about the house. And yes, I am grateful for what we were able to achieve this year because it was, you know, like a lot. Let me see if I can put my phone this side, guys. Bear with me because 
kind of that helps a bit even though those window lines now are all over me but anyway so but yeah i'm so grateful you know like for basically that we were able to you know like um do what we were able to uh, accomplish which was the floor and the painting which was a lot of work uh those two things were a lot of work and i don't even uh the floors were easy to um to figure out i didn't know how much everything was going to cost before even though i did an amazing amount of research and <clears throat> preparation when i arrived there the company that i thought i was going with when it came to the floors ended up basically uh jacking up the price on me and I, at the last minute i had to find a different company so what i did was i i contacted uh that company um that sells the floors directly and they gave me a provider in east london and then that provider um his name is paul uh and he owns i don't know if he owns but the company is called carpet trends and so they ended up coming to my house and they saw all the issues with the floor how unle like not level it was and so they decided uh, they they advised that i do a, a self-leveling screed and to level the floors and that was a a lot of work and because i had already done a lot of you know like uh, work before i left the last time which was phase two remember i did the you know like uh, the the topping but this person did a horrible job and so we had to self-level and so when we self-leveled uh, then that created, you know, like a solid surface for them and a, and a level surface for them to put the floors. And again, guys, I will stress this. If you are able to do the self-leveling screen, okay, please do it. It will save you, even when it comes to tile on, it will save you a lot of money. It will save you a lot of time and it will make your floors uh, uh so level that the likelihood of your tiles breaking if you have tiles or if you have laminate breaking becomes less uh, i mean very small because you have a flat surface and then if you have tilers my tilers i was very disappointed so my tiler <sighs> is my ceiling guy and i'm being honest and, and upfront with you he's my ceiling guy he wanted the tiling job because you know a lot of these young men they do like they may do one thing specialize on one thing but they think there's money there and so they take all the different so then they become sort of like jack of all trades so he ended up doing a miserable job when it came to tiling he got better and better i think what the mistake that he made was he took like his friends to work with him he knows how to tile but his friends do not and so because of that ah, i don't like where i'm sitting guys i may have to change this <laughs> i don't know um uh, by the way how do you like my hairstyle <laughs> i went and did a haircut and um and i was very very unhappy with it but uh that's another story but yeah so maybe yeah maybe if i do this it's better uh, so, so I ended up like, he, again, he was not a bad person and I still recommend him for ceiling, but when it comes to tiling, he needs to understand that slight, slight dips and stuff like that, or he should demand that the, uh, the owner of the home do self-leveling screen before he tried to do the self-leveling screen. I'm like, no, honey, you are not going to do that. You already messed up a lot of my tile, so I'm just gonna get the the um uh, what do you, uh, I, I'm just gonna get the um what did I say uh, uh, I said I'm gonna get you to do only the parts that you're going to do like with your tiling and that's it because I really at that point I didn't trust them but yeah um so so that is where we are I'm 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 really. To be honest with you guys, I'm looking forward to 2024, but I'm also very worried because when I was doing budgeting for for 
cabinetry, budgeting for cabinetry, and I was doing budget for um, all the things that I still need to do, which is I need to build another gut house, okay? I have to do, that has to be moved up in terms of priorities because I struggle a lot, um, you know, like uh, right now I, I have cameras in my house and I have, you know, like uh, security, but I need someone because I wanted to start really uh, growing my own, you know, like animals and everything. So it has to move up so that person will be able to watch for the house and also watch for the animals, right? Um, and so I need, need, need to uh, move up that as a priority, as a higher priority. So I need that. I still haven't done the gate, which I thought I would do, because I ended up uh, basically making sure that I fence, you know, like all my yards, my yards, uh, because I have, remember that little house that I inherited from my mom, the shop? Um, I had to fence it because animals were kind of rubbing up against it. So because of that, uh, by the way, don't forget to ask questions. And as questions come in, I will, um, I will answer them. So, but yeah, so I ended up basically uh, not uh, like, um, like basically making that a higher priority, making sure that I, I good morning, Dorothy. Hey, Punyezwa. Hey, girl. I'm assuming it's a girl, Punyezwa. But anyway, so yeah, like, um, like I, I, I had to ch change my priorities. And again, I have to change them again. So I have to build this guard house uh, and to make sure that I have someone who lives there so I can start, you know, like uh, farming. I've been watching a lot of homestead videos. There's a young man I would love for you guys to watch. Um, uh, maybe I'll share his link here. Uh, and I just love, love how talented, first of all, he is. He's a very young man. I think he's under 30 years old. Uh, he lives in Kentucky. Um, it, you, some of you, those in South Africa, you know, right? There's a place called Kentucky. That's where KFC comes from. <laughs> um, Kentucky. But he moved from Washington State and he came down. And so he does these videos, uh, him and his girlfriend, uh, they're going to get married this year. But this young man is a plumber. Uh, he's learned how to do electricity. I want to take classes on electricity. I want to learn how to do electricity. I think it's something that I, as a woman, can do because it's not too much heavy lifting. And, you know, like I can do little projects and I want to do woodworking. That Those are my two things that I would like to learn. I already know how to paint. So I want to learn, you know, like how to do things on my own, especially things like that, like electricity and stuff like that. Because sometimes you have a cabinet and you want to add lights to it, but you don't know anything about electricity, that kind of thing. So I would like to learn this. So, but, but this young man, he does everything. I mean, he knows how to raise animals. He He's learning how to raise animals. He's still making a lot of mistakes, which is totally, you know, like totally fine. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be answering you, Dorothy, in just a bit. Um, and, and so, but anyway, I would like to share his stuff. So, but yeah, ultimately at this point, I'm budgeting, thinking ahead to, to 2024, uh, where my focus, my major focus is going to be cabinetry, at least for the main kitchen, the pantry. And so I, I've ordered them, which one is more important? Because what happens when you budget, even if you leave contingent, contingency, what I do normally when I budget is to get codes first to see what I can fit in my budget. And then I add those things up and prioritize them and say, okay, which one is more important? Which one should I start with? And which one makes sense to do? Then I go according to that. Um, last time... Uh, we had planned to do the cabinets. We, we, we got uh, someone to actually come, drive from Durban. Uh, you know the Kambana. I'm not going to give them notoriety. Uh, but uh, they drove down from Durban and uh, they came and did the measurements. But they were so sloppy in their measuring that I knew they were just there to pick up deposit. And I just found out that company actually had a lot of problems with them not finishing people's kitchens and stuff. So I was like, what a blessing. 
it was that you know like i i the naive me or the person who was building the first time that first year probably would have when he said deposit give me 70 percent deposit but if you want things to be speed up and you for you to be on, on top of the line uh, i mean on, on on front of the line then you have to basically uh give me 90 percent and i'm like the only reason why i didn't give him the money is because in my mind i'm thinking first of all yes i really want to do my cabinets really want to do my cabinets but there are no details in his code and he literally gave me code there and then and i think he coded me around three hundred thousand, including some of the cabinets in other rooms but i knew that his code had nothing to do with the details because i know i've done enough research i know what's involved in terms of cabinetry and everything so i knew that he was just trying to get deposit and probably needed the deposit to patch somewhere else right and so i ended up just saying okay if you don't give me drawings of exactly how my cabinets are going to be measurements and everything how many drawers where the dishwasher is gonna be where you know like the sink the 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 cots that you're going to use all these things i'm not going to give you deposit until you give me that and he never gave me those things and he knew he knew that he wasn't gonna do the work he was just gonna have me basically chase him so even though i was disappointed that i didn't do the cabinets I was like, you know what? I am not going to force things this time because that forcing things, guys, is really what ends up costing us. If it does not, we say in closer, so sometimes you need to take a step back. And the, the thing that I've been advocating, when I was young, I used to feel like I don't have time. I got to do everything now, 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 now. But now that I'm a little bit older, I feel like we have time, especially for things like that. Yes, there are things that are time sensitive in life. I'm not advocating that they aren't, right? But in this case, uh, uh, hold on, Punezo. So in this case, I really feel like if you're building your home, your home is something that you is going to be here when you're long gone from this world. So take your time. Don't rush it. If, you know, like people, uh, like a lot of people want me to be done with my house. But remember, the challenge for me is that I'm building, you know, from another country. So a lot of people want me to be done, but I have to take my time, guys. Budget-wise, I have to take my time making sure that I'm getting good quality product at the end of the day. Let me answer some questions. Um, hey, Dorothy, uh, Dorothy, I thought you are home. That's why I said good evening. No, I'm not. In, I'm not home. I'm in North Carolina. I have to come back. I, I have to come back every time and work make some money and go back and build okay that's how it's working guys and i'm happy about that because that is a house that we will own outright with no mortgage so i'm totally fine with that uh so yeah i'm in north carolina uh Punezo. so uh let's see i want to there was a, a a question about the roof okay i've talked about the roof uh previously so i used pre-painted wide ibr uh 0 0.47 i wanted 0 0.5 but uh it was a little bit uh expensive because with my house because my house my house is more than 500 square meters okay and that is without the garage without the you know like the outdoor areas so when i was uh, building it initially without the pool the house was like seven over 700 square meters okay including the garage and the and the outdoor spaces and so now uh what that means that everything that i do is exponentially more expensive than you know like a a smaller house and so if I buy, let's say, uh, like uh, roof sheets, for instance, um, it's going to cost a lot more, okay? But I'm telling you guys this, but I really don't want to tell you because what I've done is 
I've created a PDF, okay, document, and I, I, I'm, I'm not done with it. Sorry, guys, the Christmas time has been really busy. Um, so I'm not done with it, and I've been lazy, basically, tired. I come back very tired from South Africa. Hold on, let me see if I move here with the sun. You can see me better now. Hopefully, so 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 everything costs a lot more. You know, like uh, when I when I when I buy anything, everything is like expensive. So because of that, I kind of have to, you know, like uh, do a lot of research on anything that I do. But the point I wanted to make here is I created this PDF, and the PDF is to help people guide people. In that PDF, I have phone numbers for builders that I recommended. Oh, by the way, here yeah, great news, okay? Um, one of my houses that I've designed, that I sold a plan for, is being built, okay? I won't say where, but it's being built in Eastern Cape, and I recommended the builders that, they, that built for me, and uh, they are currently working right now. So I'm so excited. It's like watching your baby grow up <laughs> it's so exciting it really is like i'm more excited for that house than i am for my own house because i feel like okay this young man who's building this house by the way and guess where he does where he, he lives uh, and i won't give the name okay but he lives in sweden uh, and he trusted me enough to ask me to to make a plan for him and then uh, we communicated the process was a little bit like you know um involved and we still communicate which is kind of nice um and uh, and so he will ask me any questions which i i'm always happy to provide answers you know me i'm an oversharer. uh so um he's building his house now and so he trusted me he asked me if i know any builders that i would recommend and i recommended these young men that actually work for me they are the ones who build the pool walls and uh they build um i mean the, the fireplace so if you notice those walls like the fireplace wall the wall that divides the dining room um and even the the storage wall um also like uh, some of the beam work um uh they are the ones who did that remember guys because i built in stages okay two things happen i either stick with the same people or i have to find new people and i'm managing i'm not using a general contractor i'm basically going out and say do you know how to build show me your work uh, sometimes I have to verify, like the first builder that he, uh, built for me, I actually found him in, uh, on location where he was building and I was happy with his work, but my house requires a lot of civil engineering, especially in the bottom. Um, and because I'm building on a slope, so he made a lot of mistakes, even though I know he can build, but he made a lot of mistakes because my house is, um, is basically you know like uh on a slope and it requires a lot of understanding this is when i had to literally go to school on my own via google and research a lot of civil engineering uh structural engineering um uh you know like um terms and ideas and so i put all of that in my document the things that you need to watch for the things that you need to uh, especially if you're building a, a double story on a slope i put in a lot of advice in that pdf and i'm i'm actually selling it as a giveaway basically so that i don't work for free guys i know it's easy for you guys to say oh mama do this this and that i have to do a lot of work so i was like a lot of people want this information a lot of people are asking me these questions and i'm fine with that i give you know like when people ask me stuff privately i give them you know what they need but think about me having to answer all these questions over and over and over so i said okay to make it easy 
let me put together a document and just put it on my a website and person can download it for themselves and then they can look it up and if they have further question and I'll, uh, I have my phone number in that uh, in that PDF so that you can contact me directly but I've given you my links to my Facebook as well but I give a lot of advice what do's don'ts you know uh, what to look for what to watch out for uh, the things that you need to pay attention to uh, the order of things when you're building your home um, just from my own personal experience because I think it, that's valuable information that people can use um, okay I'm gonna move again <laughs> uh, because the sun is right on my face now, which I don't mind. Normally, this is where I sit, but I really sit on that side of the table because I'm trying to um, stop. Oh, this is worse angle. But I'm trying to uh, basically uh, like uh, have the sun behind i mean in front of me so you can see my face but now you can't see my face how about i hold it like this oh, i hate holding camera but anyway so yeah so i hope that answered your question about the roof sheets that i've used um and the only thing i will stress guys if you're going to use ibr i use wide ibr but in the document I, I give you another advice which is important, but what I'm, I will say for now is make sure it's pre-painted. It will save you a lot of headache because a lot of times we buy paint and then we run out and then we go buy paint and we mix it and then it doesn't match. So you have to just buy pre-painted. It will save you a lot of time and money in my view. Let's see what's... Uh, Oh, I love that question. Is building a house in the rural South Africa safe? Okay, so let me give you background for those who don't know, okay? Uh, yeah, I think this is a better view. So, um, kind of sucks actually because now I have to hold my camera. Uh, so, uh, but what I was going to say is, um, so this is the most challenging question is building in rural, rural south africa safe so where i chose to build okay i chose to build in the village where my mother is from okay i got land many many years back and i didn't do anything because i really wasn't sure what i wanted to do but as i got older and my mom was getting older, I decided, you know, let me just build where I had planned to build originally, okay? So when I did that, um, you have to fence your, your, so really I was looking for that kind of, that security that I'll be surrounded by family because most of those people who live there are my cousins, uncles, aunts, and, and, and all. But you guys know families have a lot of problems. I didn't know this when I started building, but I don't want to get into that because that will be a video on its own. You guys have no idea what went, what I've gone through, okay? But I'm keeping my smile. But uh, so you still need to fence. I have security cams in my house and I have... Um, I, I have like, uh, like I, I actually ended up getting a security system from a company that does uh, private security. The reason being that, uh, and I have burglar bars in my house. The whole house now has burglar bars. So it's supposed to be safe to build in the village, okay? It's supposed to be safe, especially if you're building in a place maybe where people financially are well off okay so it is safe in that regard okay and sorry i'm looking at the squirrel through the window look at that guy sorry let's see if it will can you see that anyway 
sorry the the thing is is that in north america it you always have the sun out but it's cold outside so but yeah uh, uh, uh so it's supposed to be safe especially if you're building in my view in a place where people are financially uh secure but the the next best thing would be to build around your family so that somebody keeps an eye on your home and they you know like check and everything so those who are not south african so we have tears in south africa just like in any other country okay so we have the cities like cape town johannesburg pretoria all these durban port elizabeth you know east london pretoria all these nice cities okay if i didn't if I didn't mention your city, it's not because it's not beautiful, okay? So, and they are mostly, you know, like uh, people who are like within those cities, we have suburbs, we have the city itself, and we have suburbs, and then we have things called townships. It's like what the equivalent of a ghetto in America. I know that's not the right way to say it, but, and I hope I'm not offending anyone, okay? But, like me a lot of people so so in these neighborhoods you have houses where people own their own homes and then you have sometimes shacks which is like people basically who don't have proper homes okay so they have these shacks sorry let me have a uh, um coffee lubricate my throat <laughs> Uh, so, but anyway, so we have these, uh, like, uh, so the townships are, you know, like we created during apartheid and they were for black people so that they can basically serve these suburbs and work in these suburbs and work in, 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 in the cities as well. Okay. And then you, uh, uh, so a lot of people moved into these big cities. So that created a lot of problems in terms of housing. So you have these townships that are very closely you know like uh very close to you know like people who live in who live in shacks so and they're very small you know like a lot of them are uh, like houses right so for me i really didn't want that i really didn't want that i wanted to live in a countryside so i had two choices to go by in a you know like uh, affluent uh, uh, like suburb or, or rural areas by land, which would probably cost me 3 million. I don't know. Like land is become so expensive, especially if you're looking for something that is a good size. Okay. Or I could have bought a farm in a very remote place, which will probably be again, because the land would be much bigger, probably be around 3 million. So that 3 million would go to that, uh, the first 3 million. And then I have to build a house that matches the location on top of that. So then I remembered I have this land, which is in the rural areas. In the rural areas, we tend to be, you know, like um, uh, same people. <laughs> To make it easy same people and so i had this lot and i was just excited to be around my family so that's how i ended up building them is it safe uh it's safer than townships it's safer than cities in my view we just need to um if i were to do anything different i would say we need to talk more about how we can curb crime and make sure that what people experience in cities we don't experience in our rural homes because a lot of us basically we build rural homes because we are looking for peace of mind but what i've seen happening in rural areas is lots have become smaller by the way you get the land for free and the lots have become smaller and because they've become smaller we're kind of creating townships and that's what we need to guard against because i want us to continue to, to farm, I want us to continue, you know, like um, to, I want us to continue to farm and I want us to continue to have a rural lifestyle, but I want elevated lifestyle, even if we're in rural areas, you know, like better roads, better, you know, like, uh, like services, like healthcare facilities and all those things. Those are things that are not available there. 
I'll be honest with you. When I lost my mom, we lost my mom because we didn't have good health care. Uh, like, do you get what I'm trying to say? So safe, yes, in terms of crime, but you still have to take precautions, okay? Punyajwa, uh, is the document available? Yes, the document is available on pre-order right now. It's going to be available for download in the next few days. Uh, that's going to be my biggest focus probably next by end of next weekend It's going to be available for you to download but you can pre-order right now on my website and I will when I'm done I'll put a link below so that you can order it. It's only like 249 rands not dollars rands. That's how I literally just wanted to give it away uh, So that people there's no one who says it's too expensive for me. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I am building my house with a contractor. Wanted, uh, I guess, someone with license, especially with the slab. Okay, so again, the slab, um, you need a structural engineer. That's what you need to search for. You need to search for a structural engineer. I didn't know this when I started building. There's a difference between a civil engineer and a structural engineer. What you need is a structural engineer, someone who's going to give you a certificate and uh, and and when, when your slab is done and make sure that it's done according to the standard and the law. These are the things I didn't know, guys, when I started building. That's why I thought it was so important for me to share that document uh, because I think it will help people prevent a lot of problems that I've learned the hard way. My house is around 5 million at this point. I mean, that includes other things that were not part of the house, like um, like fencing, like fixing the shop. I fixed the shop even more, by the way. I put in plumbing there, and, uh, uh, and uh, I put in plumbing, and I put in, um, yeah, and I fenced it. And, um, and, and so these are the, you know, like little things that take you off the budget because so for those who don't know, just to get started on one bathroom in your rural home budget 25,000 because you need a tank and you need, this is that this doesn't include, um, what does it not include tiling? Okay. But for your bathtub, your standard bathtub, your um, your sink, your toilet, pipes to the septic tank, the septic tank, Georgia tank, uh, the pump, uh, you need about 25000 Uh I think that's with labor included. Okay, so I did that. Uh, again, nothing, uh, it was not planned. It was really just... Uh, so I need to finish that shop because I want that shop to be available for our family when they come to visit. I have um, three sisters and two of my sisters are not done fixing the homes that they inherited. Because guys, remember, uh, all of us, we have, they have houses in Cape Town. So when you have a house in Cape Town and then you have, like me, in my case, I have a house in America, those bills do not stop. Okay, you have to take care of yourself over there, wherever you are, where, where you work, right? But because we both, we all want to have, we all inherited homes from our mom. And so we are fixing them up so that, you know, like we can all go to the village at the same time and, you know, all have our own spaces. So, um, so I, I, I want that, uh, that shop to be available as an extra space for when we when we have you know like uh, our get togethers uh, i'm planning to spend christmas in south africa next year and you know <laughs> it's funny i'm getting old how do i know i'm getting old i've become so superstitious i i don't mind telling people what my plans are because i feel like it's all on me right i'm the one i'm the master of my destiny okay not that i'm not I, i'm not um what's the word I, I also understand that not everything is in my control and things could go wrong so i take all that in but what has been happening i've been 
hearing a lot about don't tell people your plans because people are evil and they will send out evil thoughts and 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 uh evil actions against you uh or they will give they will wish you bad and then that goes out in the universe and you you know you wonder what's going on but i really don't want to believe that because i feel like that's where we become scared and fearful and i always want to be fierce i always want to be fierce i always want to not be scared uh on tiktok i put up this video of this young man who are stealing government, you know, like those fence they put along the, 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 the main road so that animals don't go in, uh, into the main road and hurt, you know, motorists and animals themselves be hurt. I have a video of a, a, sh a ship that was hit by a car uh, that was limping because the, the, the ship were out in the main road. So when we stand up against crime and call people out, we are really trying to help everyone. So everyone was telling me, oh, no, 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 don't do that again. I happen to know this young man. I didn't know when I was pulling up to him, but I saw, oh, I know him. But the point here is I went to, uh, I stopped the car and I yelled at him and I told him, do not steal government property. And you are putting people at risk. You're putting cows and, and animal, other animals at risk. You are really not serving anyone when you're doing that. So people are telling me, no, 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 don't do that again. Be scared. And all I'm thinking is we should be doing more of that. We should all be standing up against crime. When you see crime in your neighborhood, don't say this is how we are. Uh, you know, like I'm afraid they're going to kill me. If unity the strength in unity if we are united as south african everybody knows that if you do something you do it to us all and if we approach life because that's how we used to do during apartheid that's what we used to do we used to protect our own neighborhoods from criminals because we didn't have government services then right we didn't have people we didn't even have like people picking up trash you know like we would clean our own streets we would now, this is when I was in Kailich and now clean our own streets, do, you know, like everything ourselves, including protecting our neighborhoods. But now we are scared. We give like words, amapara, this and that and that. We need to go because a lot of times these are young men, very young men who really just need love. Okay. Uh, that's why they think that they should be, you know, like uh, doing this. Where it becomes dangerous are these obviously people with guns. And I'm not advocating that we, you know, approach people we know to be hardened criminals. That's why I, I also, in that video, talked about how the government needs to stand up. Because what happens is we're being conditioned, basically, in South Africa to be rough. And that is not good. I live here in North Carolina, and it is possible to live a very laid back, peaceful, happy life. It is people. And that's something we have to demand for ourselves. We cannot expect the government. We need to demand it first. And then our government, if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, we boot them out. We will be here. Like, how many years have we been voting now? We could put a, a government out to see if a different government is going to come in and do things differently. By the way, I'm not advocating for the DA here, okay? I'm not saying that the switch is the DA. I'm saying it could be an independent party. It could be, you know, anyone you think might do the job. Because in our village, in our village, we have nothing, nothing, not, literally nothing. Uh, we don't have roads, we don't have water, we have taps, we don't, but we don't have water. A lot of times they say the pump is not working. Uh, like all, That's why I have to rely on Georgia tanks for my, for my water is because of that. Because we have nothing. Be but we vote every, you know, like five years. Oh, by the way, do you see my bang on? I wanted to look nice today. I haven't worn this in forever, this bang on here. But anyway, oh, for Christmas, this is what my husband got me. This must be my fourth Fitbit, okay? He loves he loves to wear his Fitbit. Every time I take my Fitbit to South Africa, it breaks. I don't know. Remember, Fitbit relies on the internet, relies on um on on your app, and it relies on I don't know what else. But 
every freaking time I take my Fitbit, it breaks. Now, so this is my uh, fourth one, I think. And as a result, I'm leaving it here. I'm not taking it with me to South Africa next time I go. Because, and also in South Africa, I'm, I do a lot of physical activity. So I don't need to watch my steps or anything like that. You know, whereas here in America, we sit a lot. And so having something that reminds you, you have not, you know, like met your goal for the day is nice. But in South Africa, I don't need it. I was, as I, uh, as I was saying, I was being, I've been watching these homestead uh, uh, videos on YouTube and I'm like, I can't wait to raise my own chickens. I really cannot wait, not wait to plant. I did plant some trees, by the way. Uh, like I, I planted quite a bit of trees and, uh, and, and so hopefully in the next few years we'll see them. You've seen my one tree that survived and it's doing so well, thriving. I just hope no evil people people come and you know destroy my stuff i don't want to go there but anyway let me see what other questions do you guys have uh, uh thank you so much as Kosana. thank you so much for you know like um for i i really want to thank people really um in this journey and i don't do that a lot i know because i i am still bad at vlogging after all these years okay but i do need to thank you guys for the support that you've shown me and uh my page is up to 27k on facebook and on you on tiktok which i've just ramped up my tiktok i'm at almost like um almost uh, 9k uh followers I know it's nothing for TikTok, but I appreciate that because that was a fast rise for me. And uh, and so I'm trying to, you know, like uh, have, I love YouTube because that's where I started. So I always want to keep this channel up. And this is why I post my long videos on Facebook and TikTok. I just post like shorter videos and stuff, but I will start putting longer videos on, on Facebook as well. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next phase. My next phase really will be the cabinetry. Okay. I have to finish that, the building the guard house and, uh, like building animal enclosures. I know it's kind of jumping the gun, but the reason why I want to do it because I want to start raising my own animals. And so, uh, those are the major things and finishing plumbing, uh, those are the major things that I have to have to do the next phase. And then if I have the money, then I'll start, you know, like with the furniture and everything. But again, remember guys, I have to do these things in stages because I need to be able to afford it. When it's done, it will be beautiful, but I know it's taking long. My goal is again to finish the next time, at least the house, and then hopefully in 2025 which is a big year for me personally uh i want to open the house officially i mean the house should be done in 2024 but in 2025 that's when i want to officially open it but yeah i i love to plan i i've always been a planner that's me i like to look into the future it helps me it keeps me grounded to plan to look into the future because it keeps me grounded it keeps me hopeful it keeps me having something to work for to look forward to to work towards so if you were to change anything if you're not a planner because i know there are people who hate planning be a planner it, it keeps you it, it like, um, like right now, I know that there's no way I can go back to South Africa financially and go finish the house right now. But the fact that I have plans and I've looked into, you know, these are the things that I want to do and how much I think approximately it's going to take. I know I have my work cut out for me and I know how much effort I need to put in in order to make that happen. You see what I'm trying to say? So planning is good. I love planning. It's the only thing that keeps me focused in life. Uh, and it's the only thing that keeps me looking forward, you know? Okay, let's see.
Yeah. Uh, Ngo Kelo, again, I totally agree. We, we, have to, we have to get, like, I just saw a video. It was heartbreaking. Of these people, somebody has a farm, a chicken farm, uh, and this is in South Africa. I know this because the person in the video was speaking uh, Sisoto or Sitsuana, and I'm, I'm not good at it, but I could see that he was basically saying to them, you guys need to stop what you're doing. Think about it. Crime is very expensive, emotionally, uh, physically, financially, it is very expensive. It is very draining and it is, it hurts a lot of people, guys. It hurts a lot, ordinary people. It hurts ordinary because most people now in South Africa have gated communities. They have, you know, they have gated community. They have security guard, private security and everything. That's cost. I had to put, you know, like a, a private security in my house. That is cost that I didn't have to if we didn't have crime. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's very costly. But more importantly, if you're sitting and you're always worried that something bad might happen to you, that takes a toll on you emotionally, right? It takes a toll on you emotionally. So now uh, people don't know the cost, the true cost of crime. I mean, with people's lives, with, you know, like um, people's hard work, uh, like the emotional toll that it takes on people, uh, people being left behind, destroyed, distraught because their hard work has been dissipated. Um, and you know, like you, you, you name it, it is, it has a larger, large, like if you connect all the dots of crime, you see how bad an issue is and how we as South Africans, especially ordinary South Africans, uh, have to deal with crime. The the one thing I always say is, first of all, as a human being, you have to have self-respect. That is the number one, that's the bare minimum you should do. Self-respect. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, you have to respect your family. The people in your, in a, like your family, your extended family. Then you have to respect your community. Okay? Then you have to respect your your, your, your city, your province, your, your, your country. If you can do those layers and understand how all those layers are connected, because Umzwa Kembuli says, Ukulimala Gwemondo, Kukulimala Komundu, Ukulimala Komundu, Kukulimala Kompakati, no, what's his family in Zulu? But anyway, your family is destroyed, and then Ukulimala. Right? So basically, what he's saying that we gotta recognize the circles that we need to protect. It starts with you being at the center of that circle, and then it comes with to your family, to your community, to your to your city, to your state, to your to your country, and we have to protect all these circles in order to have a peaceful peaceful existence. We've struggled a lot. Like, I mean, when I think about how hard it was for us growing up, I just want a period in our lives where we just live in peace. And that is not hard to do, guys. You have to be aware, conscious, and demand it, and make sure that that is, we, what, we do what is within our capacity as individuals, and then we spread the word, okay? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to, another thing that helps with the cabinets, Pinterest, and you can buy your own handles at Home Depot, Ikea. Yes, Dorothy. Actually, uh, one of the things I'm going to buy here in America are hooks and, 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 uh, door handles and put them in a suitcase and take them to South Africa. Sorry, guys, I have to drink coffee. I didn't drink my coffee because I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night, and I didn't sleep until probably 3 a.m. And so I woke up. It was 8, 7.50 a.m. And so I didn't have a chance to... I had to shower. I had to get ready for this, and then I struggled. Long, uh, I mean, studying the, the go-live. So I haven't, I haven't, uh, 
drunk my coffee and my coffee is getting cold like i don't know i don't like cold coffee i, I mean unless i want it cold like during summer i love iced coffee but during winter if uh, my coffee has to be either cold or hot not in between so but yeah uh any more questions let's see what do you guys want me to uh to cover what kind of roof i've already answered that um and uh your dorothy says your house is beautiful and you did a good job i'm so proud of you guys um uh, so thank you first of all thank you so much for recognizing that my house is not perfect but i absolutely love my house because i've put in my sweat equity uh in my house in building my house and i'm very very proud of the work i've done because the guest house was the first house that i built and i learned a little there because it was such a small house there was nothing you know like major that i needed to make decisions on but this house was a monster <laughs> a monster like the last time this time it wasn't too bad i love first of all i love having my husband in south africa he makes me feel good he may not i mean he knows that i love having my husband my husband is my best friend um and i love him and uh you know like we've been together for 32 years now and we are we, i just love him and i love our children so when i built that house i had those people in mind so there's still a lot of stuff that i need to do to make the home for them like for instance one of the things i would like to do my husband wants to do is to put a small since we have a huge yard there he wants to put a small um uh like padding green because he loves to golf so that's one of the major things we need to do for him and then uh for my daughter i'm going to plant uh sunflowers she said this girl she sends me a video uh one time of her in a sunflower garden here in in raleigh north carolina and so I was like, oh, this is exciting. She was like, oh, this is so beautiful and everything. So I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do for her. I'm going to plant sunflower sunflowers for her. And so the other day I told her, I said, that's what I'm going to do for you. You know what she said? She was like, don't plant too many because, you know, those things are scary when you're looking at it. I'm like, really? What? So, but the, I'm still going to plant it. I think she'll appreciate when she's looking at them through her window. And then for my son, I wanted to do something like a skating, like a uh, rink. Um, and, uh, and so like, but a small one, obviously I can, you know, like, uh, build something, but that's what I would like to do. And then, uh, for our son, other son who lives in South Africa, who has kids, um, I'm making the bum room for, you know, like for the kids so that when they come to grandma's house, they have a place to sleep, uh, that is comfortable and they can like, it's going to have bunk room, uh, bunk beds basically. And then, um, and then, uh, uh, I would like to, you know, like, um, I would like to like, um, have a play area in the yard. I'm going to have a play area in the yard like uh, with swings and everything so that the kids when they come but um so in my in my house i have the main yard and then i have the yards that are for animals and are for you know like uh, gardening and all of that um below the house right so the problem a lot of times in south africa in the rural areas if you have swings like my mother had swings in her yard uh, because she had a daycare at one point we closed the daycare when she passed away because we were like in fact she had planned to close the daycare before she passed away so we just went ahead and did that so but a lot of kids love to come to the yard and play so I want to put the playground so that even if they do come when I'm not there they're not in the main part of the of the house and also to reduce flies I'm going to put the animals away far away from the house um and i don't know the size of my land okay
but I'm thinking it's about about 10 acres, nine acres around there. Um, and so I'll have enough space for everything. Yes, I have to plant more trees. I'm going to I'm going to do something that I had um, planned to do actually when I first started building my house, which is uh, there's a group of ladies in East London, like a, a Facebook group, and I'm going to go in there and then another Transky group. There's a group called Transky. People get mad at me when I use the word Transky, but uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually have a day where I ask people to donate trees to me. And then I'll plant some of them uh, in my yard and then some of them, you know, like uh, give to other people if there's a lot of them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, my sisters could use the trees. Uh, my cousins could use the trees. Um, so I'm going to have a day where I'm asked for people, to, I'm going to ask, because really we shouldn't be buying trees. Even though I bought everything that I've planted right now in my home, but we shouldn't be buying trees. We should be asking people to give us trees and, and donate trees. And I know sometimes there's a level of control, right, that you want. And um, and meaning that you don't want to take all the trees that you, you get because maybe you're looking for a certain look or you want to use them, you know, like um, in different ways. So what I'm trying to get to is I understand that. But at the same time, oh, by the way. Let me finish my thought first. So, but we shouldn't be, in my view, buying trees. We should be asking for donations, seedlings, and stuff like that. I know nurseries will not like this, but, you know, I'm building a homestead there. I shouldn't be buying trees. But I wanted to um, talk about one last thing because I have to go. I still have to go shop for my New Year's. I'm going to a... Um, uh, a potluck New Year's Eve, like we normally do in Winston Salem, and so I um I have to go buy some food. I already cooked them mosho, and I just need to buy the rest of the stuff. But one last thing I wanted to address: I need to find a person who can help me design my driveway. Okay, I need a civil engineer. Because my, my house is in a slope and this guy made a mistake, what he should have done was to lift my house, okay, and have it be at the highest level of the slope, basically. But I really didn't want a basement, so he kind of made it lower my house. So now the slope, the driveway slopes towards the house. So I need to find a civil engineer who can help me have a nice gradual slope, okay um into the gate i've already designed everything i just need you know like a professional to make sure that my my slope is gradual and then i will have to put a drain at the bottom of the driveway uh so that the water when it comes down the driveway it can you know like goes to the sides of the house so uh, that's what, you know, like I, I, I need to do. Then I need to find a landscape designer uh, who can help me. Because, guys, the biggest challenge with the design, I'll tell you right now, the biggest challenge with design is that professionals know how to scale things, okay? If you figure out how to scale things, let me make you an example. You can have a room that is beautiful, okay? If things don't fit perfectly, whether the furniture is too small or too big, that could literally throw off the feel of the room. It could literally throw off everything. So you need to, like, you need someone to help you to scale. I've learned that when it comes to decor, but I still haven't figured that when it comes to landscaping. So I really don't want to, because that's a huge yard. Uh, and so if I if I make a mistake it will be very glaring. So I need to really just, you know, like uh, find someone with the landscaping, at least the big ticket items. I know I'm going to have a vineyard, you know, and I know I'm going to have, I've already planned my homestead, by the way. I know I'm going to have corn area. I know I'm going to need a processing room. Oh, from watching homestead videos, this a, a term that they use it's called a root cellar okay basically all your like your potatoes sweet potatoes your 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 produce from your garden 
that is like from roots you store it in that room okay so like in the future i'm going to have that processing room and so i'm going to have herb garden uh i'm going to have by the way i did plant um uh like some what did i plant fruit wise mangoes and um uh, and uh, narki narki is what in english uh clementines something like that uh like you know those little oranges so i've planted those uh so i'm going to have an orchard uh, uh i'm going to have all my animal enclosures i'm going to have a barn uh for storing i know i have storage but i need one where potentially i can store tractors and stuff like that i'm going to have a full-blown homestead and so uh i'm going to have uh a playground i'm going to have a golf you know like uh, a padding green for my husband all these things uh i'm going to have a vegetable garden uh all these things uh these are the things that i need to plan for and in order for me to make sure that i get the scale right and everything and i need to work with a landscape architect who can help me get the big ticket items like in terms of like the tree that goes here because the tree could go to be too big for the area that type of thing having said, said that you can research pretty much all of what i'm talking about and um and yeah so uh i think that is the those are the two major things that i need to do finding a a, a civil engineer for my driveway finding a landscape architect to help me with, you know, like set up of my everything. And then from there, you know, like uh, we can move from there. Okay, let's see. Any more questions? How did you come up with your house design and the websites you use? And how do you prepare yourself for the project? I'm so inspired. Uh, hey, Buisi uh, Lezulu. Hello. Uh, so let me ask uh, because I, I this was a question and answer. So let me ask answer this question. So I've always been inspired by houses since I was young. I never saw myself as someone who would design houses, but I've always been inspired by beautiful spaces. I'm a very homey girl. I'm not into modern architecture. I'm not into but I just want something that's comfortable and, you know, like, and that feels good. When I move in the house, I want to feel like this space is for me and I feel good. And that space could be small, could be big, it could be anything. But the point is, I always love beautiful housing. One of the things I wanted to do when I first moved to America was to build houses. But it's one of those dreams you shelve, like, you like, let me just put it on a shelf because I have more immediate, you know, things for me. The most important thing was making sure that I get a job and I can support my help, support my family. And so that became my focus. And then one of the things that I loved to do, this is before Pinterest. I used to go to houses, new houses, and just look at them, take in everything, what I like, what I don't like. Um, you know, like, um, uh, like the feel, like for me, I'm, I'm a, my, my daughter used to say I'm mushy. Okay. Meaning I'm not mushy. Like, you know, like, um, like that I'm mushy in terms of, I, I have to feel things. Okay. So when I get into a space, how do I feel for me? That's the question I wanted to answer with this house. Okay, so I went to these houses and I looked at, you know, like different houses, like I would go to model homes, see what I like, what I don't like. And, you know, like, and then when Pinterest and this, uh, like YouTube came, then I started watching like shows and stuff like that. Then I bought myself software to, 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 when I thought about my own home, because I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew how expensive architects can be, especially in South Africa. I think like, uh, for that house, I'll probably have paid more than 100K for the, for, for, for the architect. But the advantage there, I probably, you know, like would have foreseen a lot of the issues that I ran into. But because I was not experienced, I was blind to many things, right? But uh, so I, I, I played around with the house I want. 
if you notice my house, the, the secret to my house is you can go anywhere in the house without running to anything. <laughs> like every hallway is clean. Like you can see all the way from my bedroom all the way to the mudroom. And when you walk there, nothing will be in your way. Okay. And you can achieve that, by the way, even with a smaller footprint of a house. So that is the secret to my house. If you notice in my entry, I have a wide entry and I have a cabinet and I'm going to have a bench there as well. And if you notice, you can go straight to the kitchen without being impeded by anything. So that is, that was my focus in my house is how do I make a house that flows that you don't have to go through jagged, you know, like corners to get anywhere. You know, like literally I can run through my house. That was my focus. If you go upstairs, you see all the rooms. Like they all have access to the hallway. You don't have to go through something. Do you get what I'm saying? To get to somewhere. So that was my focus. Yes, that creates a larger house, especially if you want good size rooms and everything. It creates a larger house. But that was the main thing. My house despite it being more than 500 square meters it actually has very i know you guys won't believe it but it's got very few rooms by that i mean every space in my house has a purpose okay every space in my house has a purpose and that purpose is like we have bedrooms upstairs and a hangout space for, 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 for the young people in my family, okay? And then we have the bang room, which is designed to be big, where it can take four, uh, I mean, two bunk beds, and then it will have a TV area as well, so that the little kids can be self-contained. And then you go downstairs, downstairs it's me. I designed my house such that downstairs, I never have to go upstairs if when I get old, okay? My kids will have to come, and then they will go upstairs. They will use the upstairs. I don't have to go upstairs. My bedroom is downstairs. My laundry room is downstairs. My uh, my pantry is uh, scholar is downstairs. My kitchen, main kitchen, my former living room, my guest bedroom, which I can use as an office if I don't have lots of guests. That's the one thing actually I I kind of overlooked because I was thinking in my mind I'm not gonna be working here. But nowadays we don't retire. We become consultants, okay? We don't retire nowadays. So you always have a, uh, need an office. But the way I looked at it, I was like, oh, this would be my chance. Oh, another thing I'm going to have in my house is a, is a greenhouse. But what I was going to say is uh, it would be my chance maybe to build a nice glass office that overlooks the, um, the valley. And I can have my computers and everything in that, uh, in that house. And I can work, you know, looking at my cherry trees blooming. <laughs> I'm a dreamer. I love to dream. Uh, so I'll be looking at my cherry trees blooming and my sunflower fields. And I will, you know, like sit there. And again, these are my dreams. And I just hope that I'll live to see them true. Anyway, thank you guys. It's been more than an hour. I have to go do shopping, okay, and um, and so I kind of have to, I, I should have done the stream yesterday, because yesterday I had a whole day where I was really doing nothing, but I was wearing pyjamas all day, so I didn't feel like going out to do shopping, so, you know, blah, 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 but yeah, I have big dreams, guys, I have big dreams, and I just hope that you guys stay with me through this journey. Uh, and, you know, like, we'll be able to create everything, and I hope that, you know, like, my mother is smiling down on me. Oh, by the way, that's another thing. I painted my mother's grave uh, when I was there um, as well, but I hope that she's looking down on me and protecting me. She was very protective. I don't want to cry. But my mother was very protective of me uh, when I started this journey. And my, it, it breaks my heart every time I think that she won't be here to enjoy it. But she was very protective. She looked out for me. Uh, and, uh, and um, I mean, 
I remember when I bought my generator, she was like, no, don't use your generator. Use my older generator, right? That's how protective she was. She fought for me to get that land because, you know, some people were standing in my way. Uh, and uh, she, she fought for me, like, when we got scammed. And, by the way, one last story. When I got scammed for the windows, uh, when we were doing for the guest house, uh, so the next person who came, the person that I'm recommending in my book, who's doing my windows and my garage doors and everything, um, uh, he uh, he came and he was like, I need you. I don't know how much, you know, like deposit, blah, blah, blah. And my mother said with her stick, she said, this woman talking about me lives here. You know where she lives. Bring the windows and then we'll pay you. We've been friends with that young man ever since. Uh, Guaco, and he's done a lot for me and I recommend him a lot KK aluminium I recommend him a lot because he's very professional educated mentally and otherwise very you know like a uh, professional he's a little expensive but I rather a little expensive for peace of mind he will get it done okay but yeah thank you guys so much uh, for all the support and all the love, I truly, truly appreciate it. I gotta go. I know there's still 20 of you guys watching, but I gotta go. Thank you so much. And um, this was beautiful, actually. This was wonderful. I don't know what else I did not talk about. Um, the flaws and everything. Oh, the flaws. Uh, like, the flaws, the painting. The lady who did my painting. The house looks peaceful. <laughs> it looks peaceful and um, the floors look beautiful I still need to get all the molding and the trimmings for the floors they are very expensive guys they are very expensive I wanted to do them but they were gonna cost me like 60,000 or something like that right just the trimmings like what they call skirting uh, we call them here in America moldings uh, but they were going to cost me 60000 So uh, because I'm going with, you know, like a thick molding and uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know the, the, the term for, for, for that molding, but it's sort of like PVC style, but it's got a lot of wood feel to it. So it was uh, going to be very expensive. I think it was like, I don't know how much per linear meter, how much it was, but I was like, okay, let me wait and see if I can, um, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, see if I can find it somewhat cheaper. And I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find it. Uh, so, but I'll do that next time so that my floors look finished. But the house, guys, I cannot wait to get to a point of, if I can do the cabinet, I would feel much better. But the people that I've been working with lately, I've been choosing them very carefully and they've been professional and I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. Love you all and happy new year. Let's stay positive this year. Let's accomplish our goals. And I wish you guys well and I wish you guys a prosperous new year. Let's continue to build our homes. Let's take our time, no rush. Let's get it right rather than fast, okay? Let's do everything that we can to stay positive. Okay, thanks guys. Let's see if I can get out of this. How do I get out? Oh, duh.